Hey, fourth grade art friends, it's Mrs. Herbe. I wanted to take this opportunity to introduce you to an artist um, who is going to serve as the inspiration for our next, one of our next projects. Um, and last week, you guys did some practice with um, draw, taking 2D shapes and then drawing them and turning them into forms. And where we're headed with that is that we are going to be actually drawing and decorating and designing our own cakes. And so we are going to look at the work of this artist um, because he was famous for um, a lot of his cake paintings. Um, and so we're going to take a look at those, but we're also going to look at some of his other work. So this artist, his name is pronounced Wayne Thibault. And you would never guess it from the spelling, but it is pronounced Thibault. And from this picture here of him, you can guess that it was probably taken somewhat recently because this guy has on a mask, right? So here he is. And um, believe it or not, this past November, um, Wayne Thibault turned 100 years old which is pretty astonishing. Um, and so we're going to um, be taking a look at his work, but it's really pretty cool that he his life has spanned such a long period of time and that he's still alive um, and that we're still able to learn from him. So I wanted to give you just a couple fun facts about him to uh, just give you a little bit of an idea of who he was. Uh, he was born, his actual birthday was November 15th, 1920. So he was, in fact, um, 100 years old on November 15th, 2020. Um, so if he lives till next November, he's going to be even a, even a little bit older, 101. Um, Wayne Thibault grew up in California, and he was also grew up um, uh, along the coast. So he was around the ocean a lot. And in high school, he worked at a cafe that was called Mile High and Red Hot, which is kind of a fun name. And interestingly enough, Mile High referred to um, the uh, one of their ice cream flavors that they served at the cafe. And then Red Hot referred to the hot dogs that they sold. Um, so I thought you guys might find that kind of interesting. And as we look at his work, you're going to see some of the influences probably from his time of working at that cafe um, because he likes to draw pictures of sweets and other kinds of things, gumball machines and candy and different things like that. Um, when, um, as Wayne Thibault grew a little bit older, um, he was drafted into the army because um, he was in his 20s around when uh, World War II was going on. Um, thankfully, he didn't have to serve in combat because he was an artist, and so he was able to use his artistic talents in the Army, and he um, did a weekly comic strip in the Army's, um, this particular Army base's um, weekly publication, and the name of his comic strip was called Alec. Um, and I have a picture up here, just in this upper right-hand corner, and this is actually him. So you can see he looks a lot different. Um, this is the younger Wayne Tebow, and he's drawing um, the character. I'm imagining maybe this is Alec, um, the character that's featured in the comic strip that he um, drew. This was, um, he had a lot of varied experiences um, in art, and he started out as a graphic artist. Um, but then later on, as he um, got a little bit older, he decided he really wanted to concentrate in fine art and he became a painter. And over time, he became um, very famous for his artwork. And I wanted to tell you, show you guys uh, this painting right here. It's called Four Pinball Machines. Um, it recently sold for $19.1 million, which is pretty astounding. Although I would have to say Wayne Thibault is a very modest man um, and he is not really interested in sort of the fame and the fortune and the um, monetary gain um, surrounding his artwork, but um, he actually, um, but he is quite successful um, as an artist. 
as I mentioned, he is most famous for um, a lot of his still live paintings of edible treats and everyday objects. And so I have um, one of the, besides, um, we're going to be looking at his cakes, but besides cakes, he also really um, enjoyed painting. Another subject matter was ice cream cones. And so you'll see these are all different um, paintings he did of the same subject matter. And you might say, well, why on earth would he do that? He keeps painting ice cream cones. But you'll notice some have two scoops, some have one. The flavors are different. Um, the cones are different. Um, the color is different. The shape of the ice cream is different. And so he, he had a quote here um, that he talked about in an article that I read. And I thought it was a really um, interesting and good quote for us to think about, even ourselves as artists and as you make artwork. And he says this, he says, almost any painter takes a subject and then tries to orchestrate it in very various ways. And when he says orchestrate, he means like draw it or paint it or create it. Um, and then he mentions Monet, who's a really famous painter back from back in the, um, an impressionistic painter from back in the 1800s. And he says, Monet painted the same cathedral over and over again at different times of the day in order to see what light did to it. And then what he could do in terms of taking a flat surface and seeing what could come out of that, how that subject matter matter might reveal itself. It's a marvelous way of working. So you can see he kind of, just as Monet did um, in painting the same subject matter at different times of day and in different ways, um, he did the same in his work, although he chose to do it with um, a lot of times with sweets or everyday objects. And you can see here he has uh, three pinball machines that he painted as well. And you'll notice back in the painting that I showed you of four pin, pinball machines, um, these are gumball machines, but the four pinball machine painting, again, he's painting a similar object, but he's repeating it. So let's take a look at his cakes, his cake paintings in particular, because the way and the style of, of, of how he portrays his cakes is going to inspire us when we go to then draw and create our own cakes. And I want us to kind of think about how Thibault uses light and shadows in his artwork to make these forms really look like they have dimension. So last week when you guys were doing your um, practice exercises where you were doing some shading and you were drawing some, um, taking some shapes and creating them into forms, I talked a little bit about light source. And so in this painting right here, we can kind of determine that the light source for these cakes was somewhere probably over here. And you might say, well, how do we know that? The reason we know that is because this part of the cake is the lightest part of the cake. So this is where the light is shining onto the cake. And we can see it over here too. This is the lightest part of this cake as well. But then back here, this part is really in a lot of shadow because it is blo the, the, the front of the cake is blocking the light from hitting this back part of the cake. So that is also creating then a shadow and also a shadow along the, um, this side of this cylinder of this cake here. Now he also uses shadow up in here and you might say, well, if the light source is coming from over here, why is there a shadow around here? Well, this um, icing lip here um, would also be then blocking out light from kind of hitting around in here because this is higher um, than this surface right here. So there's a shadow kind of created in here and a little bit in here as well. Um, so when we create our own cakes, we're not going to be using paint, but we're going to be using oil pastels. And we're going to talk about how we're going to use white sort of to add a highlight or lighter areas. And then we're also going to be using black and some other darker colors to add shadows to our artwork to make it look like it has form, even though it's a two-dimensional surface. Here are a couple other um, examples of his cake paintings. And again, we see the shadows. Um, here we also notice probably the light source um, from this painting was over here because we see there's a little reflection in this little round, um, maybe it's a blueberry or piece of fruit that's on top of the cake. And then we see the shadow that's cast um, 
behind here where the light is being blocked and same thing for over here by the cake. Uh, we also see a shadow here and this is a little bit darker over in here because again, um, the light is not being able to, to shine over here. Also, there's a piece of cake missing from this cake and again, it is maybe the light is over here so it's able to reach this part of the, the cake that's being exposed but this part of the cake that it, that's extending out is blocking this part of the cake from really having any light shine on it, okay? And again, you can see his use of highlights um, and lighter areas to create um, where we can see to help create this look more like a form. And again, here's a, another fun one. This is Mickey Mouse. And again, we can tell the light source is probably somewhere way over here, um, or maybe it's even a little bit not maybe not onto the side but kind of coming from over here because this is really the lightest part of the cake and then we see how then the shadow is cast back here. Um, here's just a couple more of his paintings and I wanted because I wanted to show you um, some of the the darker cakes because some of you may decide to do a cake that has chocolate icing and you might say well it's already dark but here's the cool thing from this painting we can kind of see how he is also using um, some lighter shades of brown to create highlights as well. Um, and then he's using, or, and then he's also using even white here to also create some highlights. And then again, we see the darker to create the shadows um, in the darker spots where the light is not being able to shine onto the object. And again, we see the same thing here in his cakes where we see this is we see some of the shadows and the highlights here and you can kind of see some of the different cakes that he painted so I hope this um, served um, so, sort of I hope these images kind of inspire you um, as we move forward and I just wanted to end with this quote by Wayne T Thiebaud um, that he t that he says and I and I hope that it really also inspires you guys and it says this he says I'd give the advice that I teach the basis of that essentially is something they never want to hear and he's talking about um, he was an art teacher as well at a, at a local university and he's talking about the um, the advice that his students don't really ever want to hear and this is maybe advice that I give you sometimes that you don't want to hear, but here it is. And that is to work your head off and work harder than you think you need to work. Work when everyone else stops. The students who stay after class, who come on days when they don't need to come, who do work outside, who ask more questions, those are the ones that are interesting. And that interest is what produces interesting work. So this is a good um, motto to kind of live and work by. And I hope that not only his work, but his words also inspire you guys. So uh, stay tuned. Um, next will be a video kind of explaining how you're going to start to plan and draw your cakes.